So we're here at SMX West in San Jose, and I'm joined by Matt Siltala from Avalanche Media. You're a, you know, you're talking at all these conferences about content marketing and link building and all this kind of stuff, and you guys do a lot of really, really creative work at your agency. Um, how can we think about links and link data more creatively beyond just SEO? Well, I think it, the first place that I think of, um, you know, when we have this conversation is additional opportunities. Um, for example, uh, if we're paying attention to all that link data that we have, um, we're seeing who all is referencing it, who's tweeting it, who's pinning it, who's, you know, all the different areas and channels that people can share. Well, if you're really paying attention to that kind of stuff, you can figure out influencers in some of those other areas. And so what we do is we find out, okay, well, all of a sudden if we're you know, keeping an eye on that data and we get a huge spike in traffic, you know, we can look there and analyze, okay, well, who shared this? It had to have been someone influence, you know, influential. And so then we'll go back and we'll do a little bit of research and we'll figure out who. And then that gives us a good contact uh, for someone that likes that type of content. And so then next time that we put something similar to that out, or if we're thinking of other campaigns that are related to that, uh, we can either approach them about you know, doing something together where we know that we'll, we'll get a guaranteed link because they already like our stuff. We don't have to sell them. We don't, we're not you know, cold calling them, so to speak. And uh, um, that's, that's one of the first areas that comes to mind when, when you ask that question. My company, Delightful, um, we spend a lot of time emphasizing digital PR because it's not just press relations, it is public relations because we have this fantastic opportunity. How do you think those more traditional PR firms that are still sticking out media releases and still uh, you know, calling up journalists, I mean that all has its place, but how, how do you think that they could use this kind of data to further their course? Well it's interesting, I, you know, part of the thing that I talked about yesterday in, in my presentation was talking about how people need to stop using press releases for link building. And I had someone come to me and be like, are you saying that people should stop using press releases? And it's not what I was saying at all. You need to stop using it as a tactic for link building. Um, if you have something that is press worthy, you know, if there's a big announcement, for example, like if we, if we, uh, one of our members of our company makes a 40 under 40 award, I mean, that's something that's, that is gonna give us a lot of opportunities. And that traditional PR, um, a lot of people will find new opportunities of people to, to hook up with because they're looking for that specific type of uh, content or they're sharing it for a reason. So then, again, same thing, we just pay attention to, to who's sharing it and then who we can reach out to and maybe um, soft approach them on other ideas or other things that we can collaborate on. With a lot of people with big social followings, there's a lot of the big uh, publications now have contributors, Fords, I contribute to Entrepreneur every month. Um, how do you measure or look at influencer marketing then? Um, just how, uh, you know, what kind of a following do they have? I mean, there's lots of different ways to measure that with, you know, how influential are they on Twitter? Um, where do they share the most stuff? Like, when, when they share stuff out, how many views do they have? I mean, we all know that, um, like you said, there's lots of opportunities for people to become contributors at some of these big sites, but there's a difference between some of them that are putting something out that get maybe 100 or 200 views and one or two shares on a Forbes site or wherever um, versus those authors that are more established that when they put something out, they're getting 20,000 views. You know, they're getting... 2,000 shares within the first couple of hours. You know, think there's a difference, but paying attention to that um, and and understanding the difference in in those type of authors or contributors or whatever you want to call them. So, have you got one more tip for our viewers for using link data within their digital marketing campaigns? Um, just pay attention to your your successes. Um, one of the things that people are always trying to do is reinvent the wheel. If you have a piece of content that has been doing really well and being shared, um, piggyback off of it. Figure out a way to repurpose it. You know, there might be opportunities for um, you to turn that graphic into a video or a motion graphic or an interactive. Um, just 
doing stuff like that, paying attention to that, that uh, those analytics or that data, you know, what are people linking to, what are people sharing, and all that good stuff, and helping you figure out those, uh, those wins that way. Well, thanks very much, Matt, for talking to us, and enjoy the rest of the show.